All right, everybody, welcome back to Cracker Hunters. We're continuing our um, discussion on the predators. The shooting the shit. Shooting the shit. So this is part two to our video. I but think this one takes, uh, this, this uh, when we're talking about predators, it should, it deserves two and three videos. I think so too. Actually, I think it'll probably deserve a third third installment. Yeah, probably. Because this, this is a pretty detailed history of these guys, man. That, there's a lot of there stuff is. to talk about. And we're, we haven't even gotten into the age factor on these guys. No. And what we're going to get, I think that's part of the thing we're going to be talking about right now. Because right on this video. Uh, which movie do you want to talk about? Well, uh, we've already since one. we're going in order, we've already talked about Predator, Predator 2. What's next? I was going to say that we can talk about the society that they have. Well, th you, you, go ahead. I think that maybe we should talk about the movies first. Okay. That's what everybody knows. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about, well, let's talk about Predators, because I don't really count Alien versus Predator, because it's, it has Xenomorphs. I just want to focus on the Predators. So let's talk about Predators. Yeah, Predators. Okay. So, which actually I thought that was actually really, really good movie. I, I really did. I, I, it's not on the level of Predator 1, mm, but I, I don't honestly think that any of the Predator movies are going to uh, top that. No, no, and you're right. And But I think it was a very well made movie, especially after the disappointments for me of uh, uh, the Alien vs. Predator series. I thought this was a good return of form for I it. think that also what they did with this movie was uh, the actors. They mm -hmm. completely changed the whole spectrum of the actors. Right, and, I, and uh, plus it is a direct continuation of the first Predator because they mentioned Dutch first Schaefer. And, it's actually the, the first and second Predator. Well, okay, I, I, yeah, well, yeah. You're, well, well, well she, she directly references um, the, one, the woman yeah, in there. in she, South America. Yeah, she directly references Dutch Schaefer's character. Right. So I, I, that's the only reason why I think it's maybe a direct continuation of the first Predator. I think I've mentioned that before. You may have. But anyway. But what I like about this one is we get a different breed of predator. We get the super predators. Are they which, super or are they the, the berserkers? They're super predators. Oh, they're super predators. Yeah. They're super huge. Yeah. So basically, they're like a different breed. They, they, they're they're bigger. a lot bigger. Yeah, they're a lot bigger and uh, most of them are a lot bigger and meaner than the regular predators. And if you, uh, if which, you noticed in the movies, too, their dreads are longer. Right. And they almost, I don't. They don't really even look reptilian. They really don't, like, especially like the Berserker one. He does not look reptilian at all. The Berserker Predator, man, with his red, I, his red look and his dreads and everything, they yeah. don't look reptilian at all. I think uh, maybe we're going to have to uh, give another shout-out to the Predator Collectibles. I think we're going to have to give him another shout-out. Maybe uh, send, us a, send us what you know about the, uh, the Berserker Predator and that species. Because, right, because honestly, I haven't seen anything that references them. Um, I think they reference them some in the books. Some of the books. The, and, you mean the novels? Yeah, the no, yeah, some of the novels. I think they reference them a little bit in there. I'm not sure. I don't think they may, but I don't think so. I think they don't really focus too much on the super. I think the super predators were mainly for the movie Predators. So that may be just a, one of their things where we get another, where we get to see another kind of like another. A, a, a different race of uh, Utja in that movie. Okay. Now, now we also see a lot of similarities in that too, where they uh, come in threes. It's always in threes. Right. And I love the fact that you know they basically took them to a different home world to where they. No, it's a uh, preserve. Well, yeah, kind of like a preserve where they take their prey and bring them there. I love the opening scene of that movie where. They just drop them out of a parachute. Yeah, and it's, it's like, just. It, I mean, it starts out fighting. <laughs> yeah. Like, are you Adrian Brody just wakes up, just falls, and like, mid -fall. holy shit! Yeah, mid-fall. Hitting, hitting that little thing in his chest, like, please let this parachute open. Right, which we see one of them did not open one of them. <laughs> which, predators, you suck. Yeah, that's a horrible right, way. Yeah, to, I mean, that is a terrible way to die. Wake, waking right up and dying. Just hit the ground. Come on, man. That sucks. At least give us some instructions on how to Fucking operate the for stuff. for real. <laughs> Like, how are we supposed to know we're supposed to hit this button to open a parachute? But I, I guess that's the way of testing well, their we're, prey. Well, we're, we're, not, we're not mercenaries. Well, fair enough. Shit yeah, like that, well, fair so. enough. And I, special forces. And which I, we saw another thing, too, in that movie was uh, the Army Ranger set all the traps. Right. And I like different types of people. Like, it's not just one specific type right. of, of I mean, prey. you got a mercenary. Uh, uh, um, you a got Yakuza. A, uh, you got a Yakuza. Uh, no, no. He's a Yakuza. 
You can tell by the tattoos on his back. You could, and they say he's, I'm he's thinking, a I'm thinking of the other one. A oh. Tri, oh, I'm thinking of a, oh, the triad. It's not a triad. It's a, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Carolina's right. It is a Yakuza. So we got the Yakuza. Then we, you got the uh, Colombian Cartel. Yep. Which was uh, Danny Trejo. And then we got the um, the, the serial killer, which was... Um, uh, fucking Venom. Yeah. Oh, um, that little fucker. Yeah, what is his name? Actually, there's two serial killers. There's Walter Goggins' character. Oh, Walton yeah. Goggins' character. Right. Uh, he was the uh, convicted murderer. Right. And then uh, we had one, there was the there's a woman. Then she was the uh, she was the special forces yeah, sniper. Was, now what was Adrian Brody's character? He was a mercenary. Yeah, so he's a mercenary. So they got uh, he was a merc. Yeah, merc. So we got different. We we get to see different oh, types. Oh wait, of, we we're, we forgot about the uh, RUF uh, kill squad guy. Oh um um. I don't know his name. What about what, what's the other guy's name? Um, Lawrence Fishburne. What, he was the one that actually survived when they dropped yeah, him off. Yeah, but they never explained his background. Well, that's true. That's that's fair enough. No, I'm talking about the RUF. Uh, uh, the guy who was holding the minigun. No, that oh, that was the Spetsna. Yes, that the was Spetsna. The, uh, yeah. Russian Special Forces Spetsna. And then uh, the RUF guy was the uh, African the. The black dude. Oh, okay, you're who right. Was part of a kill squad called the RUF, the Revolutionary United Front. Okay. Which those are the guys uh, that were based in Sierra Leone, and that was the whole uh, Blood Diamond deal, where those guys led the rebellion against the African president. Those guys were fucking sick in the head. Yeah, they were. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and a lot of those, a lot of those guys were. Dude, they are badass because when they got taken, they were kids. And they started as kids going to fighting. And they know that AK-47, they know the 1911. It's basically like a, a part of their hand. Like well, part of their actually, arm. All, of, uh, all of everything that they have is all about killing. Right. But the I, enemy. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, that I think that's what I love so much about that Predators movie is they're using actual real Predators. Yeah. and, and Exactly, yeah. Real human yep. Predators. And, and that's one thing I can say. I love the fact that they got such a broad variety of things, to, of, of people to hunt. Because it's not just one person from one background. You see a different, a different, a variety of different backgrounds that they're hunting. Like each one has a specific trait that they can uh, that they can contribute to to the group, and it's not just one person taking over. Like Adrian Brody, you can tell he kind of was a leader, whatever. It wasn't whatever. that he was a leader; he was the smartest one. And, and that's fair enough about the survival. Aspect. Right, and that's what I loved about that man. Just it was so, uh, such a different variety of people that they threw in there to hunt, and we get to see like a different a different variety of predators that we'd never seen before. And, and they even mentioned in that movie, too, where, um, what's the dude from the 70s show? Um, Topher Grace. Topher Grace, yeah. You see where uh, there's a point where uh, Adrian Brody's like, well, he doesn't fit. And he's like, he's the greatest predator of all. Actually, he, no. I know what I thought, because he was a doctor. Right. What I thought was uh, the predators uh, abducted him just to uh, give medical attention. You think so? To the wounded. That's well, kind of like know, uh, throwing down a medic, you know, for uh, throwing throwing them a bone, what? like a, a like a handicap. That's what I thought when I first saw it. Right, but then like you actually, the, yeah, and then you then you realize that he's actually a uh, serial murderer. Right, because <laughs> so, it's the fact that he doesn't look like one that makes him the most dangerous out of that's all. That's right. Of them. He's like the Tim Bundy of the group. Right, and that's what he said. He said that's why. I mean, he's the most dangerous out of Ted all Bundy, of them. I'm sorry. I know what you meant. <laughs> And I love the look of the different predators, the falconer, the berserker, and I can't remember the other, the tracker predator. Yeah. Because I love the dogs that he has, which they, they specifically bred those. Like, that's the only group of predators that specifically breeds those dogs to hunt with. And we got to see the differences in their masks. Uh, yeah. Their masks, too. Like, the actual... The, the berserker one has the jawbone. Yeah, it's almost like a like a punch in the face kind of difference. Right, you know? and, I, and I love the way, like, the falconer, it has that angled look of a falcon when you look at it. Yeah, and, uh, or a, a peregrine falcon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I love the, the tracker predator. I love the, the tusks that are coming out the tracker predator's mask. Like, though, their, their mask designs were some of my favorite designs for the, the um, Yucha um, mask. I, I love those. It's, it's almost really kind of funny, too, because, it, you know, there's so many aspects in that movie that is showing the, uh, the, the Yucha uh, 
uh, community and their society. Right, because like, they have actually how they it. are so honor bound. Like, because we see in the the film where the uh, yakuza, ah, um, uh, yes. yeah, assassin, yep, fights the Falcon. falconer. Yeah, yep. it was the falconer. Yep. where he fights the falconer straight up with with a that sword. blade. Yep, he's his wrist blade, which is which their wrist blades are actually one wrist blade, right, and a lot longer. But yeah, he fought him with honor. Like he fought it, that dude with no, he had he, his sword. He, he was fair. Yeah, and that's and that is like I said, one of the main things I love about the Yuja society is that they fight with honor. Like they fight not, fair. Not all, not all, because there are some bad bloods. Which when we go into the the society aspect, they are, uh, yeah, they're yeah, they're, they're a little petty. Yeah, they are. But um, <laughs> that's and I love what I loved about Predators too, man, is that. It was it it was a return of form. Like I, I did not like the Alien vs Predator movies. I'm a big fan. I mean, I'm a big big believer in if you take an R-rated franchise and turn it to PG-13, it waters it down. Which that's what they did in Alien vs Predator. Well, they also did the same thing with Robocop. Yeah, exactly. When you when you take an R-rated franchise and dumb it down to PG-13, I think it just takes away from the entire thing. And that's what I loved about that. They got back to being R-rated and and cerebral and brutal. And their and their kills and everything like that, mm. but um, it's just it was a good movie like, all around. Like we even got to see one of the berserkers fight one of the uh, the regular predators, which that was an unfair fight. He'd already been crucified, and that and no even, telling how and, long he'd been hung on that exactly. That and, but you know what? That shows how strong he actually was because That's even right, that he still he was, had some good hits on him. And the the berserker predator, yeah, which yeah, is the I biggest mean, one out of all of them. Which is really kind of talking down on him because, I mean, come on, man. You should have just really just marked him right off the bat. Right, exactly. Especially with him being probably dehydrated, malnourished. And, and he still put up a good fight. So if he had been a full-blooded, like, if he had been rested and a, and a regular predator going in to fight the Berserker, he probably, I, he he probably would have won. Yeah, yeah, probably. And it looked exactly, it, actually, it looked exactly like the Predator. The, the, the Jungle Hunter? Hunter? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, almost dead of exact. Right. So we know how, like, it, that Jungle Hunter Predator must, if that was the same one or one of the ones. No, it, it wasn't the same one, but it was probably Oh, yeah, that's right, because he blew, blew himself yeah. up. That's right. Uh, part of the same, yeah. <laughs> maybe, some of the, maybe part of the same clan. Probably part of the same clan, because they had the same skin tone. Right. And, uh, the same clothes. looking in the mask, to yeah, be honest exactly. with you. So I think if he had been fresh coming in there, he actually would have murked the Berserker Predator. Probably would have won easily. Yeah, I agree, because like I said, with him being dehydrated and hung up on that cross, he still put up a damn good fight against the Berserker Predator. So, I, and that's one of the things, like I said, I love the fact that they took it to a different, like a, a home world, spe specifically designed, like, like I said, a game warden, to where they brought him there and hunted him. Uh, and that game was, Reserve. Game Reserve, thank you. And it, and it made it more unique and a different uh, variety. Made it, made it fun. Yeah, and I agree. It was That was a fun movie. That's the best term for that, because it was a fun movie to watch. And, and you know, it was actually um, nice to see like the different weapons too. Right. Each, yes, each, I uh, agree. Each uh, culture represented. Because I mean, you got the the Spetsas. They had the uh, the CZ7 as the right. Pistol, uh, the CZ740 as a pistol, and the minigun. Yeah. Which that was main. a throwback to the yeah. They know that was a throwback. It might have been a throwback, but. I mean, it would have. It would. I mean, the Spetsnaz used that too. Right, but okay. Um, and the reason why I say it was a throwback because he basically did the exact same thing that um, as uh, Jesse Ventura's mm -hmm. character did. No, no, not Jesse Ventura's. Um, I can't uh, remember that the black, black dude. The black dude. Yeah, I, I can never remember his name. But man. it was Jesse Ventura's weapon. Right, but what I'm saying is when he he unloaded yeah, it in the jungle. Down, yeah, the it, jungle. basically the same thing, and it was well, a throwback to me. Okay, now let's look at also the other weapons too. Is uh, the shiv right. on uh, Walt, Walton Goggins' character, mm -hmm. the convict? Right. Or the the poison with the uh, the poison with the doctor. Right. Um, uh, Topher Grace. Right. Topher Grace. And um, you look at. Uh, Adrian Brody, his main weapon was the AA-12, which is a fully automatic shotgun, 12-gauge. Oh, I, I love shotguns. Yeah, so it's a fully automatic Right. Gun. And, you know, you can see that where that's the American. And then you see the, uh, the RUF uh, uh, death squad member. His main weapon was the AK-47. Or I guess it would be the AK-74 since it uh, has no uh, stock. Right. So... I mean, it's 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 fun to to look at the uh, evolution in the actual weapon buildup in the movies. 
I don't know. I maybe, 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 maybe. No, I liked it because it, it was a variety. It wasn't just them using one weapon. Right. Everybody had their weapon of choice and of or, expertise. Oh, well, and you look at uh, the cartel, uh, Danny Trejo's character, where it was the MP5. Right. The dual MP5s, where it was just chaos. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's one of the, you bring up a good point with that. Like, it was, everybody had their weapon of, of, of choice and their weapon of expertise that they used. Right. And against the, the predators, predators allowed right. that. Yeah, they did. With the sniper rifle. Even with, with the Yakuza uh, with the samurai sword. Uh, no, uh, he found that. Oh, he remember? found it? Yeah, oh, that's why he, he did found find that it. Right. The spacecraft. That, but you're right. What he had was the uh, M9. Right. Uh, which was a uh, pistol. But not only that, but there was also, um, I failed to mention. God, what was it that I felt? I failed to mention that uh, each character was adept, and that's that's what they were used to. They were hunters. Well, and uh, oh, I remember. I remember what I failed to mention was they mentioned a uh, quote. Uh, Adrian Brody's character mentioned a quote: "There is no hunting like the hunting of a man. Once mm -hmm. you've learned this, there's nothing else. There's you nothing to. else. There's nothing else that's better. No, which was uh, Hawthorne." Right, and that's and that honestly, it's the truth because that's the most like, that's the most dangerous prey. Like the book was, yeah, yeah, it's the most dangerous prey because humans are unpredictable. They're resourceful. They would do whatever it takes to survive. And I think that's kind of why some of the predators love hunting humans because they are so unpredictable and they make for they worthy prey. Fight. Yeah, they don't yeah. they don't just lay down and die. They make for worthy prey. Yeah, we can fight. So that's I mean, what I mean. It just depends on our surroundings, and it does, and, I, and exactly, and it's whatever we got. We're going to use whatever we got to to survive. That's right. I mean, as you can see, Adrian Brody used a uh, a knife. Uh, he also used uh, a stick. Right. I mean, a fire stick. Sharp knife. Uh, knife. Sharp sticks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's he's messing all kinds of people up with predators. Now, let, I want to talk about a little bit about the uh, the comic books. Well, no, no, we, we'll do the, let's do the society first, because that, that ties into the comic books. Actually, I was going to go with the um, the Batman. Well, that's what I'm saying. Let's, let's save the comic okay. books for the last video. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to talk a little bit in depth about the, the predator society as far as the different ranks and everything like that. So, of course, everybody knows, like, well, I hope everybody knows from watching Alien vs. Predator, where that's the only thing that this actually ties into is that the first rank is, of course, an unblooded uh, Yuja. Like, where they not made any kills or anything like that. It's unblooded. So, with the unblooded, they're not even allowed to mate at all. Like, females won't even look at them at all. No, it's young blood or unblooded, one or the other. Well, you know what that reminds me of? Um, maybe it's a ripoff. Uh, maybe Bright ripped off of that about the orcs. No, you mean. Oh, yeah, that's Bright ripped off. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, it may be true because that's. That's kind of what the orcs are. Like you said, you have, yeah, you, you have to display uh, an act of courage. Right. In order bloody. to be, yeah, exactly. Well, actually, then that means Predator actually ripped up them because orcs have been around for way longer than uh, I think you that's just. A, I think that's a first time deal with the what? movie Bride. You think so? I think so. We have to look uh, that up. Anyway, hey, we'll, if we're yeah, wrong, yeah. we have to yeah. let us know. Yeah. Send us some comments about that one. So that's the first level of the Yuja, like Getting blood. The, yeah, unblooded or young blood. Like I said, they have to, in order to be, to be considered a blooded one, which is the next level of the Predator, in order to be considered a, a blooded, you have to make your first worthy kill. So that's awesome, by the way. I, 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 I think the society they have in the different levels. It's almost like... Uh, it's almost like us. Right. And it 40, really is. And 45% of the males in the Yucha society are blooded, are blooded Yuchas. Well, I mean, I wouldn't think that they would let the uh, unblooded ones live. Well, no, but they got to prove themselves. So they still let them live. They just, they just got to, they're like young, they're oh. like teenagers. So like, just like in the first, uh, Alien vs. Predator, they have to prove themselves worthy to be blooded. And once they blood themselves, they usually mark themselves with, um, Scarface. Yeah, exactly. Or a brand yeah. or something. Yeah, so like so that burn, I guess the burning of the symbols, like especially if they hunt a xenomorph, um, they burn the, the mark of their clan. Yeah, it's a or brand. Something. Yeah, but brand, yeah, first. Brand, scar, and, or anything. And plus, like the, the um, young blood, they don't have all the technology that the blood, is, like it, when, oh, when you going, become. They're going straight in primitive. Right, exactly. So, in order to even get access to some of the advanced technologies that the predators have, you have to be a blooded future, no matter what. That's the only, that's when you start getting access to that stuff. So, uh, after that, we have the retirees, 
who make oh go ahead I'm sorry go ahead oh the retirees yeah and they, and they basically make up ten percent of the huge society and so um oh, excuse me these guys these guys and, are, yeah because yeah because when they become they they're old yeah they're old and they they they've completed so many they've completed a lot of several successful hunts and they're um they're either too old. Well, they're too old well, actually, and honored. You just have to be a badass to be old. Right, right. And especially in that society, yeah. yeah. So that's the, the retirees are held in pretty good standard because they've, they've, they're they too old them. and completed a lot of successful hunts. Well, I'm sure they can handle themselves. Right. Even against anybody. I'm sure they can still go on. Right. And that's where a lot of the females, um, female, you just lie under is the retiree. I wish I wish you could see that. Right. Like I would love to it's see like something. on film. Yeah. Because a lot a lot of the information that we get is actually from the novels and the comic books where we get a lot of more detailed look at the society as a now, whole. Now we've seen um uh fan art of uh Yuja uh females. But they're hot. Well no they're hot as aliens. Well that's that's fan with their, art with their mask with their mask on. Yeah, they're hot. Yeah, I don't know because before they say that the act, the female predators and male predators actually have almost basically the same kind of Except genitalia boobs. as us, as, as humans do. Boobs. Similar. <laughs> boobs. Except for boobs. Now all of them do now. Some of them don't. Not like yeah. So some of them not okay. big. Yeah. I'm just saying. So I'm just, I'm just talking about the fan art. Right. <laughs> so after the retirees, we now have the elite predators. So this is where you start stepping up. And this is this is where you uh, get the the queen kill. Yes, in order There's to be no more queen kill. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. In order to be a, uh, a, a elite predator, you have to get a, a, a queen skull, and they make up fifteen percent of the Yuja society. So really, yeah, yeah they make a fifteen. Yeah, fifteen percent. That's that's not a lot though when you think about it. So I mean, it makes you really think like, who's the underlings in that society? That's the young bloods. No, I mean like. Who's the people who uh, build the technology? Who's the people who? Uh, well, I'm pretty sure they probably all contribute to that. Because, so? uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I maybe, think they all I contribute to that. You think maybe it's like the Spartans, right? And now, now, oh, so what? I think maybe it's like the Spartans. I think so. Yeah, because honestly, that's probably um, almost. Like, well, Spartans had slaves. Well, true, but I don't think they have slaves though. I think theirs is like, a, from what we see in the novels and the comics, it's pretty much of a, like. The only way your rank is by your kills. So I think that probably everybody probably may contribute to helping c construct the, the the architecture or something like that. At least from what I gather from it. That, that's that's me. Fair enough. And now the elites, they actually get access to some of the higher weaponry and actually um, get weapons that, that, that weapons of their strong shoot suit. It's like the uh, the predator from uh, ABP Requiem. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Like the, the elite specialize in a particular weapon. Like we got some with the spear, some with the wrist blades, which is the brawler, and uh, the spear master, of course, is the one the, uh, expert with the spear itself. And let's see. Mm, I'm just making sure because I'm checking my notes to make sure I'm correct. Well, I'm not checking them. Right. So that's basically it. And pre um, elite predators actually become retirees after a few decades. So, yeah, I don't blame yeah, them. Because, a few decades. Right. And now we come to the, well, yeah, that's a long time. A few decades. That's, yeah. Whew. But now we come to one of the hardest ranks to achieve in Utah society, and that's the clan leader. Like, the clan leaders actually have to be made by the adjunct, uh, are only made through the, uh, what's it, the adjunct, 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 whatever, I think that's the word I'm, I'm pronouncing, decision. So... The only way to become a clan leader, and this is ridiculous, the clan, and for one, the, uh, the only way to become a clan leader, you have to go on a hunt. You, for one, you have to have, before you uh, can even be considered- Adjuncticurs. Adjuncticurs, thank you, thank you. So the, in, in order to even be considered to go through the trial to become a clan leader, you have to have three xenomorph queen skulls in your collection. I don't that th would be hard. No, that's ridiculous. Is what that is. That is. That's suicidal. ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. Now, so basically, they have to have three. Let me see. Three. No, 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 no. Actually, let's see. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Three right. educators. Yeah. So 
They accept, and plus, and um, so basically now we have to have the three um, Xenomorph Queen Skulls. Now, in order to become a clan leader after that, that's just the prerequisite to even go through the trial. The yeah, trial. Yeah, that's, that's just uh, um, an interview pitch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's your, that's your, um, well, I've your, done your this. qualifications to be yeah. a <laughs> Yeah. And they're like, oh, okay, well, me you and got, my friends will review this. Right. And now, after they, and now after, they, after that, you have to actually clear out with one. You can have no more than three. Uh, you just with no. It's you and two other yuchas, and each one of those yuchas have to have three queen skulls. So now after that, oh, you and two other badasses. Yes, yeah, two. You and two other badasses have to go out, go out and and clear cleanse, a nest. Yes, clear a xenomorph nest with no less than three hundred xenomorphs in it. Fuck so, that. <laughs> yeah, you guys, that's ridiculous. So, these elders are on a scale of awesomeness that are impossible. You're, you're talking about uh, you just that are on the scale of uh, King Leonidas. Right, yeah, exactly, yeah. And of course, you know, King Leonidas is real. The Yujas are not real, but maybe, I don't know. Yes, and, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Maybe, I don't know, but the thing is, is that they have to be on that scale. Right, and you know what, this, and I don't mean to cut you off, but you know how hard this is? Only 5% of the Yuja society are clan leaders, only that 5 That seems like a higher percent than I thought. Yeah, I would have all thought like maybe one or two percent. Yeah, but five percent is still yeah, low. Like I said, high, <laughs> yeah, higher percent than I thought. I was I was gonna think of like maybe like one or two percent. Right. And I guess three queen skulls. That's a lot, man. That's man. Because now you you gotta those clear. Goddamn things are huge. Right. Not even just that. You gotta get through the. You gotta, you gotta get be through. Good at fighting. Yes. You gotta get through the the warriors, the Praetorians, and then the queen. After that, to even get a queen skull. So, pretty much you gotta be a badass. No, yeah, you gotta be like the ultimate. Ultimate yes. Spartan. Yeah, so, and they're actually get and the, the clan leaders get first choosing of like mates and stuff like the females and everything like that, which females actually go to gravitate more towards clan leaders to, I guess, to, to carry on the, the strength of that bloodline. Maybe that's like a... It, it almost reminds me of like the uh, samurai and the uh, Spartans, like how yeah. they are. It just breed out weakness. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So after the clan leaders, we now have the how, how do you pronounce it? Adjunct the curse. Adjunct the cure. Uh, educa uh, educators. Adjunct. Mother. Oh. It's it's hard to pronounce the word, guys. It's adjunct. Where's the oh. adjunct the caters. A drug indicators. We'll go that with that. What I just said. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I'm agreeing with. You. It's not educators. Educate. No. Um, Educa yeah, educators. Yeah, educators. Thank you. That's the, yes. Educators. So they make up one percent of the Yucha society, and they actually are the ruling class and world leaders of that society. Now, I want. Of course, we're looking at these notes. That's only for one of our subscribers that. They're kind of holy crap. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm. Our uh, our subscriber is going to call us out, which is honestly, it really is kind of appreciated. Thank you uh, for making mistakes. Now that's why we have our notes. Yes, because we don't. <laughs> yes, right. Yes, because the predator collectible, the predator collectibles. Um, uh, subscriber, he is good at catching stuff that we have made mistakes on to make sure we are correct. Sometimes, which, sometimes it's a little. Uh, um, no, he's absolutely actually right on a lot. Oh yeah, he is. But and he does it in a way that where it's not insulting either. Right. Now, and that's what I appreciate more about that. Now I'm gonna go ahead because I know he's gonna be watching this one. No, oh, well, I hope so. Yeah. Which I hope he does because I'm throwing out. I hope you can see these. Well, let's say, let's say, I told you, let's say the comments for the last okay. video. Let's okay. say that, yeah, let's, let's say that. Because we got one more, we got a couple more that we got to go over. All right, what are we All talking right. about? So the adjunct, uh, say that again for me. Educators. Adju adju a adju um, adjunct educators. Adjunct educators. 
So they make up 1% of the youth society. And These guys the only awesome. way to ever rise to that position is you can have, have that, you could have, you had to have, have completed at least five xenomorph hive cleansings. That's ridiculous. That's the only, and they're always clan leaders. They're always clan leaders. But you had to have cleansed out five xenomorph Ooh, nests. that hurts. That's a that lot. That hurts just even thinking about that's it. That's a lot. That's throwing your petty bomb. Yeah, that's brutal. That's, well, no. That's hoping you survive your petty bomb. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's ridiculous, man. That's how much it takes to even get to the ejecticators. I finally get, finally, I got it. Ejecticators position. Because that's the rule, that's they're the ruling class of the of their home world. So we're going really far into this. We are. And I like it though. I like it. So and I think people I think people want should I don't know. know. Maybe it's too far. I don't think so, man. I think a lot because a lot of people want to know their their history and stuff. Cause you look, man. Cause you just get a random thing. You kind of want to know it. All right. I so, do. So what is uh, the wolf predator? The wolf predator is an elite predator. Like that's he's an elite. It? Well, I so think, that's. I would think he's an elite because of the because uh, he has t weapons tailored to him. Because I don't think he's a clan leader. Because well, no, actually. I think he would be a clan leader because of how skilled of a warrior he was. Like killing Xenomorphs to him were easy. Like it wasn't even a challenge. The for only him. thing that really kind of jogged him was the uh, the alien. Yeah, exactly. And he and still beat he it. He still killed it. Right. And I think for him, for me, I think that's why he would be a clan leader because his skill in battle well, I think was we top see, notch. Well, uh, I think Xeno Queen Skull in his. Uh, in his throne room? Yeah. And it may be, I'm going to have to go back and look at that. You may I'm, be right. I'm also going to have to do the same thing. Because I, I would, for me, he's no less than the elite. That's the minimum he is. He's yeah, at least but, an elite I predator. Mean, honestly, I think the elite predator would be the uh, jungle hunter. That would be an elite predator. Yeah, but so would the wolf. No, I'm, I'm saying that the wolf predator is better than... No, actually, I don't think the predator, I don't think the jungle hunter, hunter would have been an elite. I think he would have been more of a, probably a blooded or a... Let's see, a blooded or a... No, he's definitely blooded. Yeah, he's a blooded and one, yeah. Same way with the... Uh, the um, the city hunter. Yeah, the city hunter, definitely blooded. Yeah, I, I don't think they were clan leaders or elites because... Let's, let's compare the wolf predator to them. The wolf predator he's was... more so, fucked up. Well, no, he's got the scar on his face from where he has, he has fought many xenomorphs. Yeah. But I think, for me, he is more skilled because he has... He has more access to advanced weapon with the whip in, in his society. Though. That's what I'm saying. That's why I think he's so at he's got to be. He's got to be. He's uh, an elite. A leader. Least. Oh no, he's a leader greater. That's, that's no. I said he's got to be a leader. I, well, that's what I'm saying. Elites well, are elites, maybe, though. See, that's that's the whole point. See, this of, is why I want to go in depth. See, see, that's, see that's the whole point of it. Is that you know. We don't get to see uh, the wolf predator's trophy room. We get to see the home world of the predator. But what I'm but saying is, see is that trophy room. It, it, but going by their definition of their society, he is an at least he is at least an elite because of his at weaponry. Least. Actually, at least. A, a, absolutely, at least an elite because of the access of all that weaponry he has. Oh yeah, he's an at least that elite. Whip, that whip that he has. Yes. Is, Definitely the first time we've seen that. that. And the mines, the trip mines and the wire mines and stuff like that. I mean, the um, laser mines. Yeah. He is an elite, an oh, elite man, predator. Oh, uh, don't mention his uh, throwing star. Exactly, yes. So you see a lot of the, like the, the city the hunter. Weapons. Yeah, the city yeah. hunter and the jungle hunter don't have access to that. They just have basically the spear. The disc. It's the, the disc or the plasma um, cannon. So I think for me, and this guy, he has two of them. Yeah, exactly. Well, he has two. Of course, of course, he uh, ripped one off of uh, one of the dead predators. And, and that's true. But I, I but think I'm sure he wouldn't have the technology to uh, use both of them. He would he, have. I, it, I, I don't think he would have unless he was. Uh, oh yeah. Right. Uh, elite or higher. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I think he's an elite one, uh, and he may be a clan leader too. But I don't think I, he's a honestly, clan leader. I think he is. I don't think so because. In order, if he was a clan leader, he would have took some of his clan to go to, to go nah, clear out the unless, uh, um, unless he was just being a dickhole. Yeah, that could be true too. <laughs> Which I will all the glory for myself. Did, he did kind of seem like an asshole. Oh, he did. But when you think about it, with with the prestige he has, he was experienced, and who's gonna I'm, argue with him? You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take all these guys out. Exactly. I who, think the only thing that that stopped him from bringing his clan was uh, uh actually i think the only thing that 
that killed him was he didn't expect the pred alien. And that and that probably is what it is. So, yeah. I mean, you got to look at it and you're like, oh, well. I mean, he didn't even take his good mask. He took his fucked up one. Right. So that really just shows you where his arrogance kind of uh, was like undoing a little bit. Well, not undoing because who's expect well, the pred alien? Yeah, exactly. I mean, who's expect that? Yeah, yeah. who's going to expect that? So maybe that's what it was. And I think, honestly, he was a clan leader. I can believe that. Cause yeah. Yeah, I can believe it. Like, that dude was Dude, skilled. he had the tech. And yeah. He had the knowledge. I mean, and the tech to melt down an entire ship. So I, I can kind of agree with you that he may have been a clan leader. Yeah. But like he I said, he's he, no less he than had a, he had a He had the tech to melt down an entire spaceship. Right. And I can agree with that. Like, he's, like I said, for me, he's no less than a, an elite predator, but he may be a clan leader. Right. But all right, so the next level we got after the um, Adjudicators, we have the Bad Bloods. Now, the Bad Bloods are the ones who hunt their own or just kill or hunt just to kill for the, for the sport of killing with no honor in it at all. And that makes up only 2% of the Yucha society. Go ahead, you were going to say something? No, I was just thinking. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Right. Now, and you got to have your sociopaths. Right. Now, we have one... Uh, yeah, exactly. Every society has that. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> yeah. Have, you gotta have your murderers. Fair, fair enough. Your dick holes. Yeah. yeah, and that's what bad bloods are. Dick holes. All right, so after that, we have the apprentice. And now those are actually honorable humans taken by predators to learn their ways. Mainly, uh... Um, Noguchi. Noguchi. Yeah, Noguchi. Uh, Michi, uh, my Mac, Mich Michiko... What's his name? Michiko, uh, yeah, Michiko Noguchi, yeah. So she's one of the few that it was even taken to their predator home world. And actually she's the only one we know of. Yeah, I think they know there's one more. If I can't remember his name, it was a dude. But she was, was it Shaver's brother? No, no, no. It wasn't him. It was someone else in one of the novels. I can't remember the name. But far as I, um, but as far as I know, as far as the novels, comics, those two are the only ones that have ever been taken to a predator home world and okay. trained as predators. And the only reason why she did was because she helped take down a queen. No, I think she killed a queen. I gotta go back and read the book. You may be right. But even though the predator, the Yuja, respected her enough because she helped take down that, that Xenomorph Actually, queen. I think she killed the queen. She probably did. Because she's done it before. After, uh, I know she's done it after that, hunting with the predator. Now, that's, a, that's another thing that kind of pisses uh, both uh, Carolina and I off is that um, when we're talking about the AVP movie, which is uh, awful. Yeah, it is. Uh, the, girl, the black chick, yeah, whatever her name is, she was supposed to be Noguchi. That's right. Like, and seriously. She was supposed to be based in Antarctica. No, she was supposed to be Noguchi. But it is what it is. It's Hollywood. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, so, so basically, uh, the, um, after The Apprentice, we have The Ancients, which are over a, a thousand years old or older. Which that lets you know how powerful and how skilled you are to live in that society and make it to be live a thousand years. It's almost kind of, uh, I would almost say it's like Viking, where they're kind of hating life because they're so old. Well, no, no, like in theirs, they're like they're like some of the most yeah, highly respected in the Yucha society for even making it that long. Yeah, what I'm saying though is that. I mean, come on, really? They're not gonna die in battle. No, exactly. They're that skilled. Yeah, they're not that because they're either clan leaders or um, let's see, I mean, or retirees. One that, or the other. That, that's what makes them. Um, that's what makes them depressed. And I, and I honestly can see that you not being being so old to where you can't I'm even just hunt so anymore. I'm so good. I'm so good. <laughs> right. I can't die in battle. Right. So, and now that I'm so old, nobody's gonna fight me in a fight. So. I'm gonna die of old age. Right. They probably just say fuck it. And that's just yeah. Suicide. Mm. Cause yeah, because they got things because they're either clan leaders or retirees. Actually, uh what it is is uh I've uh Don't. All right. <laughs> Remember we're gonna say the we're gonna save those for last. All right. All right. So what we'll do this last one, the last the last level of their society, and we'll go to the comic books. How's that sound? Well, then you're itching to get to them. Well, what I was going to say was uh, that when it comes to a uh, predator society, when they lose, but they honorably lose, they commit seppuku. Right, with the petty bomb, as you call it. No, actually, seppuku. When they lose... Oh, oh you're talking about... Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, and they actually have a second, too, to decapitate them. Right, and that's what makes me think if their society is based off of samurai society. Almost. Samurai versus Viking versus Egyptian versus... 
pretty much every kind of society we've ever had. I think that's the whole point of the Yuja. Maybe, and you may be, that's a good point though. And um, in um, my Batman versus Predator comic book, that's what happened. Of course, you know, Bruce Wayne doesn't kill. Right. So what he did was he took a uh, an elite Predator and he beat him. So. Which I'm uh, sorry, that's not gonna happen. Let's be honest. It, Batman's not beating an elite Predator. He's he not. did it by technology. So you mean to tell me Batman has more advanced technology than the Yuja, mm, who've no. been around for centuries? No, I'm sorry, for millennia? I have comic books to prove it, so. Well, that's because, yes. that's because somebody wrote that bullshit in there. That's why, because that's bullshit. It's funny because it's not nope. the same. You're, say, you're telling me, basically by what you, by, not you, not you. Basically what that comic is telling me is that Batman could have beat the wolf predator, which is complete and utter bullshit. He's not beating him. Like, I'm sorry, he's not. That's bullshit. In my opinion, which, again, I'm sorry, we're getting, we're getting ahead. I want to, we're going to discuss that in a minute. Okay. But yeah, yeah. So the last, the last society, the last part of society that the you should have are the philosophers. And those are the ones that Gang. aren't, that they're not hard. <laughs> sorry. Don't make me lose check like Boy that. Lovers. <laughs> Boy lovers. Boy lovers. I like the th- I like the three hundred reference there, by the way, but um, yeah. So they basically, but the, the, they may be the um. Let's see, they 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 attend to matters of the mind instead of of glory of the hunt, and they, we don't know how how the other Yuja treat them, but yeah, it's they probably look down upon because you know they're boy lovers. But they're uncommon or even rare, so they, that's what they're saying. It's uncommon or very rare that they don't. So it it's probably makes up less than 1% of the society. Like, like they said, you know. Everybody's got to have their uh, conscientious objectives. Right. <laughs> hey, hey, even oh, conscientious hey, objectives hey, can hey, be hey, badasses, good, good though. Good point, good point. I mean. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge. Yes, sir. Um, Desmond, um, Desmond, I can't remember his name because he's like one of my heroes. You can be a consci- conscientious objector and still be a damn badass. Same and he was. Everybody. Huh? Yeah, I mean, he's but I'm just saying, you can't be. Because you don't want to participate in killing, don't mean you can't be a badass. Well, he saved about 100 people. But not a single weapon. That's right. So, yes. So, everybody, we've already went over all the, uh, the you just society. So, what we're going to do now in our next video, we're going to go, because I know, I know Anubis is itching to get into these comics and everything, which I'm glad. But um, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little break again, and we're going to come back, and we're going to start discussing the novels and the, um, the and comics. The comics. So everybody, join us again. We hope to see you there. Peace.